So we start designing the 13 megahertz coil antenna for NFC. And for the receiver side, usually we have a parallel LC circuit. So in our case, let's suppose we have already the capacitance, which we consider our initial value. So we have already um, this component at hand. And then we have the task to find what the L is to achieve the resonance at 13 megahertz. This is our receiver side. So the reason why you have a parallel LC is because it maximizes the voltage, received voltage at resonance. And uh, later on, we can move to our transmitter side. The transmitter side, we can, for instance, use the same uh, inductor that we have used for the receiver side. And, but for this case, we have a series uh, LC circuit. The reason why we have the series LC here is because it maximizes the current. Therefore, the field, is, it reaches the maximum value. For both cases, we have the resonance frequency described by this formula, and that's what we're going to use for our design. So our first uh, step is to, for instance, define what kind of capacitance we are going to use. This is a website I found on the internet. It just uh, implements this formula here, this analytical formula here. Uh, this is their resonant frequency for an LC uh, series or parallel circuit. And let's say, let's suppose we take this 47 picofarads. Uh, we pick 13.56 megahertz, and then we find finally uh, the, the result of 2.9, calculate here, 2.9 microhenries. This is the inductance that we are going to use. What about the wire? Uh, let's suppose we we are going to use the wire of these Ethernet cables. This is the common uh, used cable for breadboards. This is the this is corresponding to AWG24 wire, and it has a diameter here in millimeters. This is another web page. In millimeters, it gives 0.51 millimeters of diameter. This is the second data we are going to use for our design. And finally, we have the inductance here. We can jump to any analytical formula. I found this another one here, um, coil inductance calculator. It implements this formula here, length, diameter, and that's everything it needs, and also the, the number of turns. And here I can type in a couple of numbers. First, I have to select centimeters. So centimeters, turns five, I have already typed in six, and length one centimeter, right? And we can calculate here. And finally, a single layer coil. And then we have 2.4 microhenries. So this is not exactly 2.9. You can play around with these numbers. But anyway, uh, there are so many variables involved that you just need to get a grasp. So then we can finally, we can jump to the cat fecal. We create a new model. And as usual, we define the variables. Right click here, add variable. Uh, number of turns, let's, let's call it M, 5, or add. Next variable, wire radius. This is the AWG24. It's um, 0.051 over 2. Add. It came from this um, table here. Again. Next, we type in the diameter, which is six, the length, which is one, F min, minimum frequency, which is 10 
megahertz, units are given in hertz, and fmax, let's type in, for instance, 15 megahertz. Uh, you have realized that the dimensions are given in centimeters here, from this um, calculator here. We just go to FICO and change from meters to centimeters. Okay, so it makes it easier to type in the numbers and to analyze it. Next, we are going to design the actual uh, coil or antenna. We go to construct and we just pick this helix. The helix, you can see the helix can have different radius. For the sake of, for our case, we have here diameter over two diameter over two that means it's like something like this so it's not uh, it doesn't have this kind of topology geometry and the height is our length again this data was taken from this thing here this application here length number of turns it uses the m and create here it's very easy it was created FICO created for us the helix. Aromatically, it assigns a wire to it. And then right click, properties. We, see, we say that the radius is wire radius, which is corresponding to our breadboard common a wire. Apply, okay. Now it has here the coil. Um, Next thing, we have to excite this thing here. We have to assign parts to it. So one way to implement the part is to get two small arms here and connect it with some sort of a part. So first thing we do, we use a line. You type in line. And here in yellow, you see the starting point. You can, you, you can make all the computations to find this point here, but it's much easier just to, to type in, to press Shift and Control at the same time, and you just tell it this is the, the, the initial point. And then it asks for the end point. The end point, as you can see here, let's say it has the same as the starting point, 0 and 1. It doesn't make any sense because the starting point and end point are the same. But let's say uh, we have here uh, x along the x or u direction. We have instead of 3, 4. So it, it has 1 centimeter. It's a 1 centimeter arm here. As you can see, you just type in create. You see this is the line. And you, do, you can do the same for the other arm here below. Again, it's a control shift. We select this point. And for this, the end point is U is four. We give it one centimeter, zero and zero. We add, there we go. Then we have two wires. Actually, this one, it came delete. We have our wires here. And finally, we connect both arms here. Again, we do a line. We don't need to make any computation. Control Shift, Control Shift, Create. There we go. We have the connection to plug in our uh, source. Um, these lines, we do the same. We say that this is properties. We say this is a local wire radius, wire radius, apply, and also here we say this is properties, wire radius, apply, and properties, oops, it's not here, it's here, properties, wire radius. You see here another thing, this is the perfect electric conductor. This is, it creates some trouble for our computation because um, it doesn't have any kind of loss. 
So as the name implies, so the, 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 the real part of the impedance is going to be a little bit screwed up. So let's say we create another material. So here in media, right click, we select media library and we find aluminum here edge model close so then this thing here we come here properties instead of pack it's aluminum apply this here properties aluminum we do it for all of this all of those wires here properties aluminum apply properties aluminum apply there we go um all these wires they are connected so you need to tell fico that they are actually connected so we just select all of them here pressing control and union it's done now fico knows that all of them they are in touch to each other we select this wire number five and here now we can attach our source wire part and in the middle right and add just take the opportunity and attach a voltage source to port number one we have two ports maybe i type it twice i just delete this one here Okay, and then we check if our voltage source part one 50 ohm fine. Now, um, what we are missing here, uh, we plugged the voltage source. We have to, before we do the mesh, we have to inform FICO about our frequency. Let's say we have a F min here, F max here. And let's say we have, for instance, 21 points. Now we can do our mesh and create mesh. We can use, for instance, here wire radius over 4. It's meshed. It's a very nice picture here. You can see the mesh was automatically done very fast. Um, if we haven't forgotten anything, we can just go to solve run, CEM validate. Maybe you made some mistake and the mistake will pop up here. Everything is fine. Um, what else? We can ask for um, the field if it's needed, request near field we have a radius we have we, we, let's say we sample this uh, plane here xy plane so let's see here is uh, a diameter minus diameter minus diameter zero diameter diameter Zero, something like this, right? We are. Um, and here, let's see 21, 21. If you want to take a look at this, at the field here. Okay, close. Now we can actually start the simulation, FICO solver. We save it with any name, coil, for instance, coil two. There we go. Okay, it was finished. Uh, we have a message here. This message, message is uh, usually uh, is related to a problem with uh, our plane here, our field, uh, uh, this plane where we sample the field, but we can just ignore it. If you just move it a little bit up or down, the message, the warning will disappear. It's nothing important. Uh, we can jump to post fecal and under post fecal we can take a look here it says 
take a look at this problem, etc. We can take a look at our inductance. The main, the main uh, goal of this uh, simulation here is to get this inductance. You can see here the, the near field. Just because we ask, just go, we jump to a frequency close to our thing here in the V. And then you can see here what, is, what the field looks like. This is the electric field, magnetic field, as you can see here. Um, we can make this uh, under display, instantaneous magnitude. You can see the electric field in the beam, and you can also see the magnetic field. How it develops in frequencies, and also how it develops in phase. Right? This is the maximum. This is the supposed to be the frequency we are interested in. So, um, but we are not interested right now in this. This is just for the sake of appreciating the beauty of the field. Uh, we can, uh, we need to find what is the inductance of our wire here. So, how do we proceed? We pick here under home the Cartesian, and un under Cartesian, we just drag and drop voltage source to it. As you can see here, we are seeing the reflection coefficient. This is, uh, of course, it, it's related to the 50 ohm uh, power that we are using, but let's see how is the impedance. Uh, we, the impedance doesn't, uh, it's not interested in what kind of reference impedance you are using for your circuit, it doesn't matter. So then we see here the real part. So if you have used the PC, this result here would be messed up because uh, how can you compute, compute the real part of something that doesn't have any loss? So the aluminum gives us uh, some better result here, it's a straight line. And we can also see the imaginary part. As expected, we are under this um, real part. And this part here implies what? Implies that we have an inductance. So another thing, if there is, if you increase the range, and if we see a point where the imaginary part crosses the real part, that means uh, the inductance turns into a, a capacitor, then you will see what is the self-resonant frequency of your coil. From that frequency upwards, that would be a capacitor, not an inductor anymore. Uh, the SFR is far from here, so we can use our antenna, our, our coil as a coil. And then you can see here, using measure, we can see that 355, we have a um, 22 to 8 ohm of reactance. Under Excel, we can compute what is the inductance, 228, 228, frequency is 13.56 megahertz, and what is our inductance is this number, which is the reactance, the imaginary part, over 2 times pi times the frequency. Type in. So as you can see, 2.6 micro Henry's. 2.6 micro Henry's. If you come back here, 2.4 micro Henry's was predicted by this simple formula here. So then uh, that's the way we uh, designed our antenna. Okay, thank you very much.